I used to think of myself as a spoken word poet because spoken word was the main medium through which I was sharing my poetry. Um, I think also spoken word was the platform where I first felt like there was room for my poetry because before that it was, you know, like very academic high school spaces where, um, what, is, what is it that Kevin Cobble says? But It's all about white men getting lost in the forest. Dead white men getting, Dead lost, white men getting lost in the forest. So, you know, in spoken word and in slam was the first time I was seeing young people of color um, being told that there was room for what they had to say. So that was sort of the realm I felt most comfortable in. But then more and more I realized that while I do love performing, the sort of the happy place for me is the actual writing and like seeing something on a page and making a book. Um, so I think that like boils it back down to poet. Yeah, same. I think like I always try to remember uh, the point in which I loved the thing I was doing. And it was always like in the reading and in the writing and, and it, it feels kind of like you're like eating like you're just like ah oh, man i'm in the cave doing making a thing but then i don't it was during our coffee workshop where like i had this piece that i liked but a part of me was like this doesn't make any sense and it doesn't make sense until i say it out loud and it doesn't hit until i say it out loud and hear the people around me um feel something for, like lean in you know and so it is even on the paper it is, still is a live art uh, it still needs to be spoken so like um i'm a writer i'll write anything um and then i'm the speaker i'll speak anything because even in performance it feels like a conversation it feels like you are in conversation with the with the audience that you have so i don't know spoken word poet just sounds there's too many words so just poet i, I think it, I think that not all poets are spoken word artists, but all spoken word artists are poets. Um, and I think that a lot of the times the distinction between spoken word artist and poet is made because poetry as an academic form like doesn't want to welcome people of color. Mm -hmm. And people of color do so well in spoken word because mm -hmm. it gives us such space yeah. to like be as honest and genuine as possible. Um, but the reason like why I won't in particular call myself a spoken word artist is A, because of that reason, because I think it gives like white academic writing like a reason to kick us out of the room. Yeah. Um, and because I think that when the term spoken word is used in those spaces, um, it's understood as something that's inherently that it, it's understood as something that's like not only inherently black, but like coupled with being inherently black, inherently like not good. Physically less than. Yeah. Physically less than. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if like we do ourselves a disservice when we like hold on to that instead mm -hmm. of like forcing them to put us in the same room. Yeah. Like, yes, I'm a, you're a poet, I'm a poet, we in the same room. Yeah, like, I just have bars. I just have better than bars. You. <laughs> and I'm better than you because I come from a culture that like allows me the space to be better than you. So, yeah, that's the only reason I'll call myself a poet. I just always thought spoken word was like a dated word term. Whenever I think of spoken word, I think of like Love Jones. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so, yeah. 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 So when Give I started doing, oh, shoot. yeah, so when I started doing poems, I was like, the people were calling me a spoken word poem. I was like, I'm not doing Love Jones poems. This is like, <laughs> this I was like, is I was like this is different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, I just always considered myself a poet. I just thought spoken word was like, I thought, I thought it was just the Love Jones term for poetry, and I, know, I knew I wasn't doing that. Um, I just knew I had. I knew. I just knew when I uh, wrote poems and then when I got on stage that I did have like a fire in me, you know, what I mean? to to fuel those poems. Um, and I don't know if I can call that like spoken word, but just my just natural fire. That's you. Yeah. What inspires me to write? Um, there's a whole bunch of things. It used to be a lot of like family stuff, a lot of stuff in my family that, that happened or was happening, um, and I didn't have like an outlet for like why it was happening. And like I deal with a lot of like stuff in my family, especially my mom's side of the family. Um, and I always like wanted to like articulate that because I've always been kind of like the dark horse in my family. Like my family, all my family has like shaved heads. And I was the one with like the dreads, but I cut that off now. But um. I don't know, a, a lot of like a lot of family used to inspire my work, a lot of personal narrative used to inspire my work, but now it's it's more of, of like just getting 
in tune with like my history and just my background. Like I'm of um, Trinidadian descent and South African descent, so I've been um, working on poems that you know explore that background and explore those stories. Um, so that's what's like really been driving my work as of recent. Um, and po poets that are like inspire me that are living today. Um, Yusuf Komanyaka, Terence Hayes, um, hmm, what was I gonna say? Jamal May was like my like. mentor. <laughs> Not to be living. Um, Timothy Donnelly. Timothy Donnelly, yeah. he's really dope. Um, I do have, I, I really like Ann Sexton. Um, I really like June Jordan, um, Audre Lorde. Um, come on, Felix, is he's a bond, so I got Adam, you know? Uh, trauma influences me, trauma and history and uh, logic and the things I don't understand. And I find that every day I wake up and there's something else that I really, really don't understand that I feel like I need to understand. So I'm basically just inspired by exploration, right? But also by like necessity. Like, okay, so we're in this time right now, Black Lives Matter and like, you know, the new, it's not a new movement and like um, this movement and so on and so forth. Like, why is this happening? Like, what do I need to discover to like be a part of this movement in my most effective way? Like that's what inspires me to write every day because I know that it's about exploration and like, unlocking some doors and like figuring some shit out for some other people. Um, I guess a lot of my favorite writers are just writers who live in that space. So, um, you know, people like, obviously Mahogany L. Brown, because she's my first and last mentor. And that's just how it's gonna go. Um, so like Mahogany L. Brown, Injun Afis, Jean Amber Lee, these are all people that are really close to me, but then even further out, right? Like Erica Hunt mm -hmm. and um, uh, like Octavia Butler, obviously. Mm -hmm. And people mm -hmm. like June Jordan and um, Angel Nafis, who I think I maybe I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So um, worth mentioning two times. Twice. Totally <laughs> worth mentioning two times. And I don't know, I have like a long list, but like Tracy K. Smith. Mm -hmm. and, um, that's your girl. So that's my yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah. Tracy K. Smith is my girl. And like Natasha Trethewey and mm -hmm. just like so many people who are doing um, work that um, is hard to do that like they are not being allowed to do mm -hmm. but are sort of like breaking out and doing it anyway yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, I think what what brings me to to write is um, I don't feel well when I'm not writing I'm usually unwell if I'm not writing and I think those two they have they have to go together. They have to be. There's a symbiosis there. Um, so it is a it is a kind of therapy to come and sit and you know let the world kind of leave you for a moment or let you focus on one thing that you found in the world. Like you were saying, like, like what is this that I'm just not right. like? Why can't? Why is it making me pause? Right. Uh, and then I'm grateful for the pause. But I think also what fuels it is is an urgency. Uh, is I don't think you should write anything unless you feel it's urgent, mm -hmm. unless you feel like I, I have to get yeah. this now. Yeah. Uh, if you could get it later, get it later, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, also, just like you're a craftsman, then, right? You get to build stuff, uh, and it's an agency that I think people of color are not afforded. Yeah. Uh, you feel you write, so you are, right? I write my name, so I've happened. If I write what's happened to me, that I've happened, I've existed, this moment in time existed. And my mom would always say to me uh, uh, about school, because I'd be so bored in school so often, but she'd be like, but that's the one thing they can't take from you. You know, they being whomever, you know, they being the pervasive they, that is trying to take, that is like attempting to commodify and take your stuff. Um, but if I write, they can't take my stuff. Uh, and that's never left me. Um, and I, and I think too, just like, there's there's a certain, uh, I'll be grappling with it my whole life, trying to get a thing right. Sort of on the, on the larger scale, um, what motivates me to write is, you know, I hear my, my grandparents and my mom, to some extent, speak um, this like translationese English, where they'll you know they'll think of something they'll conceive of thought in arabic and then they'll speak it in english and the syntax is so off and it's so beautiful that it, it's almost like a cheat sheet you know i could just write down everything they said and it would be a poem already mm -hmm. um so i feel like to have this sort of front row access to this language it, like how dare i not take it down how dare i not write it down you know um and then on a you know on a more specific level 
I'm just very fueled by obsession in my work. Yes, yes. Sort of like, very much so. I wish I was um, <laughs> like I, I fixate on yeah. things, and then the only way to like unfixate is to sort of write it out of my system. Mm -hmm. It'll be at, like at whatever level. It'll be like old dirty bastard or water or like or both or both. <laughs> Being the only guy in the group, um, it's actually pretty, pretty cool for me. Like, it's like super dope bragging rights. <laughs> so I can say I'm in a collective of like three very attractive women. So that gives me like, yeah, it, gives me, it gives me a lot of points. So um, I, don't, I never really thought about like being like the only guy in the group or because like these, they're like my best friends, you know what I mean? So like our our relationship like supersedes gender or any like other relationship like that you know what i mean these are just my best friends yeah. like when like things are going on like with me and like my family and stuff like i call them or i hit yeah. them up you know what i mean i let them know i just talked to aziza about this pain i had on my jaw last night <laughs> because i remember that she had something similar and i was like aziza do you, did you have this pain like in your jaw like below the ear yes. she was like yes i had exactly that <laughs> Two in the morning. Yes. You know what I mean? I can't really do that with anybody else. So I never really put like, oh, I'm the only guy in the group in like that really perspective. Um, I think um, in terms of my work, um, I think I think just overall, I think we just used to feed off each other so much, so much, so much, just being just around each other. But as we like like went apart, it's like I'm doing like persona poems about like jazz artists and Langston and Hughes and stuff like that. And, I don't know, I think just our, our work is different just because we're like kind of like operating in different places some of the time. Um, but for me, um, all three of them have definitely, um, they, they give me like different ways, like a, different ways of thinking about how to approach the craft. Um, and like I said, I don't know if that's like with them like being women and me being a man. It's just like us being like best friends and us like growing in different ways. And once we come back together and let's say we have like a, a reading to do and we're all like sharing our work, it was like, oh, you can see what that person, I can see what Aziz has been up to. Right. I can see what Safi has been up to, what Kamal's been up to. They can see what I've been up to. And then you're like, you listen to these things and you kind of like, when we go back to the drawing board, we take like what we like right. learn from like, from all of us and we like just shake it together. Yeah.